How's it going, everybody? Long time no see. So uh, I hope everybody's going, doing well. Hope you had a good Christmas and good New Year's Eve. Hope your your happy your New Year is off to a good note. All right, it is now finally time to start talking about some of my teams in the postseason. Uh, unfortunately, I this last year, uh, I know I've been doing a lot of Central stuff lately, um, but I did miss the Seattle Storm in the postseason. I also missed the uh, Fight Hunger Bowl by the Washington Huskies. Uh, good bowl game uh, for the dogs. That was huge. Um, unfortunately, uh, there were bigger topics of conversation uh, the, around that game, which we can talk about at another time. But it's now time to focus on the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, they are going to play the New Orleans Saints on Saturday at CenturyLink Field. Now, uh, before we preview the Seattle Seahawks playoff game, uh, I just finished watching my... Uh, I just finished watching my uh, preseason video, if you will, and I would like to uh, read some comments, uh, some people who were nice enough to uh, comment on the video. I know it was four months ago, but still like to give these guys a shout out. First off, my buddy Jude Steves. By the way, Jude Steves, 87, I will see you at Showware Center when my Seattle Thunderbirds take on your Everett Silvertips. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, I'll at least win one of our bets, unlike last year. All right, anyway, Juice Steves wrote, I think they could go as, uh, this was before the season, they're talking about the Seahawks. I think they could go as high as 11-5 and five again this year. They'll probably split it with the Niners and Rams. Uh, Carolina could be tough along with the Giants in December. Atlanta will be tough, and I expect, uh, expect and hope the Saints can win in Seattle on Monday Night Football December 2nd. They'll, he's a Saints fan. Uh, they'll be a playoff team, but unless Kaepernick has a slump, it will be a tough battle for the division. Re uh, Seattle reaching Super Bowl would be nice, but the fact it is in New York doesn't have me thinking they will win. All right, thank you, Jude Stitts. Uh Next up is Seahawker th uh, 365. Again, this is four months ago on the preseason video. Um, I am admittedly a bit worried. Us Seahawks fans tend to rate Russ, uh, meaning Russell Wilson, a bit too high after just one year. I want to see him continue to have success before we put him too high up. Uh, so far preseason, he has been good, but he has overthrown a bit and seemed a little off than normal. Uh, along with that, the O line isn't great. Russ need uh, Russ needs needs protection to make a lot of the plays he does. Thank you for commenting, Seahawker three six five. Last comment on that the preseason video was Mark Bradley. He wrote, I am not worried a bit about Russell Wilson or the team. What you're saying is not cemented in stone. All kinds of things can happen, that's for sure. But I bet the Hawks have a great year and win the NFC West. This is the best team player for a play, player the Seahawks, uh, for a, the best team of players the, for the Seahawks has ever had. All right, so I would like to just give shout outs again to Jude Steves87. Seahawkers365 and Mark Bradley for commenting on the videos. Uh, next up, we have some things that I need to go over, and they are the following. Um, I don't have necessarily crow to eat, but I have some review things of what I said in the preseason video. Uh, first off, Russell Wilson didn't have a slump. He's the only quarterback I know in the NFL and also in college. Uh, heck, I'll even go high school. Uh, he, he did not have a slump. Basically, he had his bad games but he won his bad games. And there were some times where he didn't throw a lot, but when he did uh, attempt to throw, there were a bunch of completions. Yes, receivers play a role in that, but he did not have a slump. And I'm hoping, knock on wood, that uh, he does not slump in this playoff game, his first home playoff game. Uh, I also talked about how the schedule did not necessarily favor the Seahawks. The schedule began to favor the Seahawks the more they won. Uh, I was very, very happy they finally beat Atlanta for the first time in the Pete Carroll uh, era. So that was nice. Um, uh, also, um, we took uh, we beat Carol uh, we beat Carolina on the East Coast opening day. I talked about that. So happy that uh, and just the more we won, the more <laughs> the more the schedule looked a little easier. So uh, uh, really happy about that. Um, next up. Uh, I got to give props to the Arizona Cardinals. I said they were not going to play very well, and they played a heck of a lot better than I anticipated, and they beat the Seahawks. They actually gave the Seahawks their first home loss in two years. 
the hype that I talked about a lot in the preseason video, um, the hype is still there, um, which I will talk about uh, later. So, that being said, let's talk about the actual game. So, the Seahawks come into this record as the number one seed with a record of 13-3. and three. The New Orleans Saints come on into this game as the sixth seed, seeded in the uh in the NFC with 11 and five, they just defeated the Philadelphia Eagles to uh, have this opportunity for a rematch of the Monday night uh, massacre is what they call it in Seattle uh, against the Seahawks. Uh, the, uh, the New Orleans Saints average uh, more point, uh, excuse me. Oh, I misread that. I apologize. The Seahawks average uh, 26.1 points a game. New Orleans averages 25.9 points. Uh, the Seahawks give up fewer points than the Saints in 14.4 compared to 19 points total. Uh, road record for New Orleans, it hasn't been pretty. Uh, actually, they just won their first road playoff game in franchise history. Props to New Orleans. Got a record of 3-5 and five on the road. Seattle is 7-1 and one at home. Uh, conference record, uh, almost identical. 10-2 and two by the Seahawks, 9-3 and three by New Orleans. The Seahawks are led by Russell Wilson, who has a completion percentage of 63%. Uh, he's throwing 26 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Drew Brees, uh, who did throw for more yards and get more touchdowns, uh, he has a 68.6% uh, completion percentage uh, through 39 touchdowns, which is more than Russell Wilson, but he also threw more uh, interceptions with 12. Um, for rushing leaders... We have, uh, I've heard Pierre Thomas is not going to play. Uh, and that was according to John Clayton in Seattle uh, today on the radio. So I'm going to go with Mark Ingram as their backup. He scored one touchdown, averages 4.9 uh, yards per, uh, per carry. Seattle is led by Marshawn Lynch, the beast, uh, hoping to have a beast quake uh, this week, like the last time the Saints came. Uh, with the Marshawn Lynch uh, scoring 12 touchdowns, averaging 4.2 yards, uh, two yards a game. For receiving leaders, uh, we're actually tied with the Seattle Seahawks. We got Golden Tate five touchdowns, Doug Baldwin five. Uh, we got to watch out for Jimmy Graham. He's going to be uh, a factor for the Saints. 16 touchdowns compared to uh, Colston uh, with five. So, um, so that was a little bit, a uh, little look at. Um, what they are offensively, uh, defensively, the Seahawks have allowed uh, an average of 274 yards per game, which is about just over 30 yards less than what the Saints allow. Um, also, uh, Seahawks allow fewer passing and rushing uh, yards compared to the Saints. So it's going to be very interesting how you see our defense compared to the quick throws of Drew Brees and that New Orleans uh, offensive unit. A little bit of history for uh, for you. Um, this is for the regular season, not uh, the po not counting the postseason. In the last six meetings, Seattle is four and two against the New Orleans Saints. Uh, last time they met was this past year when they won thirty when the Seahawks won thirty four to seven. Uh, previous year you got oh excuse me this does include the playoffs I apologize. Uh, then you got to go to that playoff game. And I'm just going to say this to Jude Steves. Um, if you win the rematch, I don't want to hear any, you know, oh, well, we got our revenge on the Seahawks, you know, for what happened five years ago. No, 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 no. Completely different teams, completely different offensive units and and, and, and uh, defensive units, completely different player uh, players for the most part, different situation. And all I have to say to you is seven and nine. Okay, seven and nine. I know I'm doing a little trash talking in my pre preview video, and I don't usually do that, but seven and nine. Your team lost to the worst team ever to enter the NFL playoffs. And it doesn't matter who you beat or, you know, who, how many Lombardi trophies you win after, uh, you know, after it. You will always have that on your resume as a Saints fan. Own it. Anyway. Uh, after that, the New Orleans, uh, before that, early that, that year, New Orleans won 34 to 9. And then 28 to 17 back in 2007. That was when Drew, that was actually started uh, with Drew Brees. Uh, so Drew Brees actually has had success in Seattle before the Saints became a playoff team. I don't know if you know that. That was the year New Orleans went, I think, 0 and 6, and then they finished the year 8 and 8 and almost made the playoffs. So um, keys to this game. All right. So keys to this game. 
Obviously, uh, we are going to go with uh, home field advantage. Obviously, uh, that's going to play a huge role. 12 man's going to be there. Everyone's going to be partying. Everyone's going to be loud. Everyone's going to... Eh, people could be drunk for all we know. Um, so, obviously, the 12th man is going to be a factor in this game. Uh, KJ Wright is not going to play for the Seattle Seahawks. He actually was the guy uh, guarding... Um, uh, Jimmy Graham, so we're going to have to watch and see how the Seahawks adjust with that. The big news that broke today, Percy Harvin will play for the Seahawks, and we saw about 20 snaps from him uh, last uh, this last season against Minnesota. I know it was against Minnesota, but those snaps looked really impressive. So hopefully uh, hopefully Percy Harvin you know, can be that X factor. If he ends up getting hurt, I'm not too concerned because I am one of the few Seahawks fans who are not concerned about the receiving core. For some odd reason, a bunch of people are like, oh, we yeah, we have a, you know problems. We need that deep guy. Uh, we've been playing without Harvin and Sidney Rice for the majority of the season. we got guys like Doug Baldwin, who is still for some odd reason underrated when he shouldn't be. you got Golden Tate. I mean, <laughs> you got guys that do that catch the ball, and you got things that work on the offensive line. Um, obviously for the Seahawks got to establish the run. I think that's a given. And, um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, this is a big key. Seattle needs to have a special teams play go their way right away. Whether that be a turnover on defense, the interception, uh, kickoff return or, uh, uh, for a touchdown or a kickoff return to put some in Saints territory, scoring first, whatever you want to call it. They have. I, it would be very beneficial, in my opinion, if Seattle got the first big key special teams play. Because once they t hit that special teams play, the 12th man is not going to shut up. I mean, and that's just going to ride. You know, get the crowd excited even more. So, uh, predictions. Well, I'm very, very sorry. You're not going to get any predictions with me. Which goes back to what I was saying in my preview video about the hype. I'm hoping the Seahawks win this game. A Hawks fan, as you can see. But I'm taking it one step at a time. I'm not thinking NFC Championship game. I'm not going to even pay attention to New, uh, you know, Carolina or San Francisco. I, I mean, they could have injuries. They could, you know, there could be stories about, you know, weather on the East Coast. They could talk about travel. I haven't heard anything from San Francisco, Carolina. They are all the way over there. I'm not paying attention to it. I'm focusing on the New Orleans Saints. If the Seahawks do win, though, they will. Uh, they will get to my. They will meet my expectations of this year because I said I needed to see 12 wins and get into a playoff situation, or um, or uh, get to the NFC Championship game in some way, or get the division. Uh, and they did. So, but they do need to get to that NFC Championship game. We are this close, this close. So, if you're looking for predictions on how I think the game is going to be played out, unfortunately, you got the wrong video. Talked about stats. Talked about keys. We'll see how it plays out on Saturday. All right. Thanks for watching. Go Hawks. I'll try to recap the game probably on Sunday. And uh, we will uh, talk to you later. Go Hawks. Let's go. Let's put Se that's, <laughs> let's make Seattle. Make Seattle. Give, give Seattle more national coverage. This, this is nice. But, again, 12th man. Let's take it one game at a time. Don't think about Super Bowl. Don't think about NFC Championship game. Just think about this. Think about the New Orleans Saints come to Seattle and how we need to rock the heck out of that team to give our team an advantage. That's what we should be thinking about. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Go Hawks.